I love gardening, but the weeding is getting a little old. So that's why this year I put down a whole weed barrier between every row. It's been a huge time saver in the garden. I still have to weed between the plants. Some people will burn um, holes in the tarp and plant their plants in there, but because I had so many different kinds of things and I wasn't sure what I was going to plant where, I just thought I'm just going to put this weed barrier down in between. It's been a huge time saver. I'm loving it. In the areas where I don't have any plants planted and I just want to keep it open and weed free so I'm not getting more weed seeds for next year, um, I'm planning on putting a whole bunch of uh, strawberries probably in this area next year. Um, this weed has been coming up. It's called purslane. I have been battling with it a lot. And then I thought, you know, why am I battling with this? I read recently that it's edible. And so I tried it and it actually tastes pretty good. You can stir fry it, you can saute it, as long as you don't cook it for too long. Um, just pick the leaves off. They're a succulent, they're a little tangy, citrusy tasting, and they're also really good fresh in salads. They're one of the highest plants in omega-3 fatty acids very very good for you they also have a lot of vitamins minerals and glutathione and so I'm just letting this stuff grow and I'm harvesting it and using it as food why fight a helpless battle because it's just growing everywhere I planted a lot of lettuce thinking I was going to have a lot of great salads this year and let me show you what the birds have done to my lettuce So this is my little short lettuce patch I've actually replanted it with other things because this is how sad it looks I had filled this with lettuce seed, it germinated well, I spent a lot of time watering and weeding, and every day the lettuce patch got a little smaller. The birds were out and they picked and eaten all of their favorite flavors of my lettuce. It was a nice lettuce mix from um, Baker Creek Seed. I heard a lot of good things about it, was hoping to enjoy it, but most of it has gone to the birds. So that's why I reverted to eating the weeds. The birds aren't bothering the purslane. I'm going to be chopping it up and using it in various recipes. I found a really good recipe that uses fried potatoes, eggs, onions, garlic, and then you stir fry a little bit of the purslane in there. It sounds like a great breakfast idea, so I'll be trying that for breakfast tomorrow. So I've been eating purslane for thousands of years, apparently. Uh, there are no contraindications to ingesting purslane. People may have a reaction of an allergy, as with any food, always start off with a very small amount and see how your body tolerates it. But it's been part of different cuisines for thousands of years. So it's just an edible weed that we have considered an invasive weed that we hoe out of our garden rows and people aren't eating it. And we should actually get back to eating the weeds because they grow really well in your garden. Birds don't seem to eat it, but it's quite tasty. So let's go back and I'll show you how you can identify it. And there is a look-alike that is poisonous. To me, it doesn't really look like a look-alike, but it is similar and I can see how you get it mixed up. And I do have a sample of that look-alike growing near my house. So we'll have a look at this purse lane here in the garden, and then I'll show you the sample at the house and how you can tell them apart. See, I have a lot of really healthy purse lane growing here. A lot of composted horse manure. You can tell it's purslane because it grows from a center tap root and all the leaves and radiate outwards. The stems are kind of, you can see this one, has a bit of a reddish color to it, reddish green. It's a succulent, so the leaves are kind of thick and full and plump like a succulent. The leaves grow an alternate pattern. It grows little yellow flowers when it's mature that will eventually become black seeds and the yellow flowers will have um, five petals on it. It's quite tasty. Sometimes when I'm out hoeing the garden, I'll just grab a few um, leaves and chew on them. It's a little slightly tangy, a little citrusy and kind of a viscous texture. And they're actually delicious. So I'm back at the house. I've spent more time in the garden lately, just hoeing and harvesting than I have around the house so things have been neglected. I have some lovely weeds growing and this is the sample of the weed um, that's called the spurge that is a look-alike to our purslane. So I brought a sample of the purslane from the garden and then the spurge. So if I pull out a spurge again it starts with a center tap root. It spreads out. It has the same kind of leaf pattern and a similar size leaf also has a red stem. So 
the way that you tell these two apart, which one's edible and which one isn't, is that the poisonous one, the spurge, when you break it, you can see that there's a white sap. White sap is poison. This is not an edible plant. And when you break the purslane, there's no white sap. So you know that this is good to eat. As with anything new that you're introducing to your diet, always double check your references, make sure you identify what you're eating, and try a small amount first and see how you tolerate it. Do you have any uses of purslane, any recipes that you have tried in the past? I would love to know because I'm going to be using a lot of it. As you can see, my garden's full of it. So this will be part of our regular diet throughout the summer as I eat the weeds. Thanks.